Hi everyone, my name is Caroline Lee and I play in the orchestra at the San Francisco Ballet. I'm a member of the viola section. Right now I'm home with my lovely pet goats, tomato and potato. This is tomato and this is potato and I just gave them some treats so they're really, really, really happy. So I am going to try to read to them, if they'll let me, maybe they'll eat the book. Uh-oh, that could be a problem. But if they won't eat the book, I'm going to try to read you and the goats a book named The Philharmonic Gets Dressed. Shall we start? So, The Philharmonic Gets Dressed. Oh, I moved places because the goats wanted to eat the book. And I wanted to make sure I have the book so I can read to you. So this book is about a symphony orchestra, the members of the symphony orchestra getting ready for a big performance in the evening. So when you come to see the ballet at the opera house, you'll know that there is an orchestra in the pit. You might not see them when we perform because we are under the stage, but you can definitely hear them. And some people during intermission or before the performance like to walk up to the front and look down below and see all the musicians warming up and getting ready. So this is a story of how we might get ready for a big performance. It is almost Friday night. Outside, the dark is getting darker and the cold is getting colder. Inside, lights are coming on in houses and apartment buildings. And here and there, uptown and downtown, and across the bridges of the city, 105 people are getting dressed to go to work. First, they get washed. There are 92 men and 13 women. Many take showers. A few take baths. Two men and three women run bubble baths, and one man reads in the tub while the cat watches. One woman sits in the bubbles and sings. There's a cat watching. When they have finished washing, they dry. They use big towels and little towels and a lot of dusting powder. All the men shave except for three who have beards. Two trim. Then, when the 105 people are showered and bathed, shaved and toweled, dusted and dry, they put on their underwear. Very important. The men wear undershorts or briefs. Some of them wear t-shirt undershirts with sleeves. Some wear undershirts without sleeves. And a few of the 92 do not wear undershirts at all. But night and the temperature are falling and one thin man buttons up a suit of long-sleeved, long-legged underwear. There he is. All the men put on black socks. There are short socks and long socks and fancy silk socks that have decorations called clocks. Some of the men wear leg garters to keep the long socks from falling down around their ankles. The 13 women put on different kinds of complicated underwear. Underpants, pantyhose or stockings, petticoats or slips, and brassiers. One woman whose feet always freeze pulls on wool socks over her stockings. Oh boy, we have a few of those in our orchestra in the pit too. When all the men have their underwear on, they get into long sleeved white shirts and button them up. Then they put on black trousers. 45 men stand up to get into their pants. 47 sit down. Each pair of pants have a shiny black stripe down the outside of each leg. The men zip zippers and button a button or two. One man has wavy black hair streaked with white, like lightning. He puts on a very soft white shirt with ruffles down the front. It has special cuffs that fasten with cufflinks. This man hooks a wide black cloth belt around his waist. The belt is called a cummerbund. None of the other men 
wear belts with their pants. They button suspenders onto their west lines of their pants and snap the suspenders over their shoulders. Hmm. Eight women dress in long black skirts. They wear black tops, sweaters, or blouses. Four women put on long black dresses and one wears a black jumper over the black shirt. A few of the women put on jewelry, a necklace, earrings, but no bracelets. Bracelets would get in the way when they're working. Because if you're wearing bracelets, it goes jingle, jingle, jingle when we play our instruments, so that's not a good idea. What do you think, goats? Oh, they're too busy eating right now. All the men put on black bow ties. Some tie them in the front of mirrors. Some stare into space and tie them. The thin man whistles a tune as he ties his tie on. 27 men clip on their ties that are already made into bows. The man with the wavy black and white hair, the roughly shirt, and the cummerbund ties on a very big white bow tie. It looks like a white bat. No one else has a tie like his. He slips on a white vest and then a black jacket that is short in the front and long in the back, where it divides in two, like a black beetle wings. The jacket and pants are called tails. See, there is a man with a fancy special outfit. Tonight, all the other 91 put up men put on tuxedo jackets. These are black too, with shiny satin lapels, but they do not have that beetle wing back. I wonder what makes that man special and different from the others. When all the men and women are completely dressed in black and white, they get ready to go out. They put on overcoats, jackets, or capes, boots, or rubbers, mittens, or gloves, some scarves, many hats, a few earmuffs. Ooh, it must be a cold place. Then almost everyone picks up a case. The cases are different shapes and shades of black and brown. The man with the dark, wavy hair with the white lightning in it, the roughly shirt, cummerbund, and bow tie that looks like a white bat picks up a very thin leather briefcase. No one else has a case like his. There he is. All the 105 men and women say goodbye. Goodbye to mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, or friends, children, dogs, birds, a cat, whoever is staying at home. And sometimes I have to say goodbye to potato and tomato. Then they walk out of the 105 doors into 105 streets, and there they take cabs, cars, subways, or buses to the middle of the city. Well, I drive on the Bay Bridge to go to the city because I live in Oakland. The man with the black and white wavy hair wears a black coat with a velvet collar and white silk scarf. He steps into a very long car that is waiting for him outside his apartment building. While the driver drives, the man opens his case and looks at some papers. He sings a little and hums. At 8.25 on Friday night, in the middle of the city, 104 people walk onto the big stage in Philharmonic Hall. They have left their overcoats, jackets, or capes, boots or rubbers, mittens or gloves, some scarves, many hats, a few earmuffs backstage in the dark green metal lockers. They have left their cases in different shapes and shades of black and brown back there too. Now 101 of the men and women are carrying the musical instruments that were in those cases. Three people do not carry an instrument. They are the harpist who plays a harp, the two timpanists who play the kettle drums and the small percussion instruments, the cymbals, a gong. These instruments are too heavy to carry around. They are already on the stage, or in our case, in the pit. There's a harp, and there are all the percussion instruments, and there are the kettle drums. 
There are 102 chairs on the stage and two stools. Near each of these, there is a music stand with sheets of music on it. The 104 people take their seats. The double bass players sit on stools. Everyone turns to the first page of the music. It is a white page covered with black lines and musical notes. The man with the black wavy hair lit with white enters. He walks to the front of the stage and steps one step up onto a box called a podium. There he can be seen very clearly by the 104 people on the stage and by the hundreds of people in the audience. The audience applauds. The man bows. He is the conductor, the leader of the orchestra, and he holds a stick in his hand. It is called a baton, which is French for stick. He is. The conductor raises the baton in the air way up on the ceiling of the Philharmonic Hall. Six chandeliers sparkle silently. The conductor brings the baton down and the hall which is as wide and long as a red velvet football field, fills with music. The music floats and rises. It sings and dances from violas, violins, cellos, double basses, flutes, a piccolo, bassoons, clarinets, oboes, French horns, trumpets, trombones, a tuba, a harp, drums, cymbals, chimes, and one thin silver triangle. There's a triangle. You want to see all the different instruments on this page? Do you know what these instruments are all called? That's right. It is 8.30 on Friday night, and the 105 men and women dress completely in black and white and have gone to work tuning the black notes on white pages into a symphony and in our case a ballet thank you so much for joining me for that book that was a fun one to read it kind of gives you a little insight of what we do to get ready it's a big process hold on one second i have a little special surprise for you okay so now it's your turn to get up and perhaps do a little dance with me. I brought out my viola and I want to play you a little tune from the ballet Sleeping Beauty and feel free to move and dance a beautiful waltz. Okay, goats, here's a little Sleeping Beauty. Feel free to dance. I hope you enjoyed the story and I hope you enjoyed that little bit of Sleeping Beauty. I can't wait to be back and playing music for all of you. Until then, you stay well and be safe. Take care.